How's it going guys? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to fix white balance, how to use the vector scope to dial in natural skin tones, and how to apply a subtle color grading technique to give your footage a soft and cinematic finish. Let's start by switching to the color workspace at the top of Premiere Pro. This automatically opens up the Lumetri color panel and scopes, which are essential for any kind of color grading. Next, create a new adjustment layer from your project panel and drag it above your clip. This lets you apply all your color corrections non-destructively and makes it easier to reuse your grade or tweak it later. With the adjustment layer selected, head over to the basic correction section in Lumetri. Grab the white balance selector, that's the eyedropper tool, and click on something in your shot that should be white, like a shirt, maybe a piece of paper, or a neutral gray as well. In this case, we're gonna use her teeth. Now, Premiere Pro is gonna try to auto-calculate the white balance from there. You can fine tune it using the temp and tint sliders. Now, as you make changes, keep an eye on the waveform RGB scope. You want the red, green, and blue lines to sit closely together instead of spreading apart. Okay, so now that our image is balanced, it's time to refine the skin tones using the HSL Secondary Edition in Lumetri. In this area, you will see three eyedropper icons. Using the first one, hover over the part of your face that you want to isolate, and you'll see the Premiere Pro creates a selection based on that color. To see exactly what is selected, be sure to enable the color gray checkbox. Now, just below the eyedropper icons, you have the HSL sliders, which give you even more control. The hue slider lets you narrow or widen the range of color being selected. The saturation slider adjusts how vivid or muted the colors are, while the luma slider helps you clean up shadows or highlights in your selection. Above these sliders, you'll find some preset color swatches. These are quick shortcuts to target common colors. You can click one that is close to your subject's skin tone to get started, and then fine tune the selection using the HSL sliders. To take it even further, you can use the denoise and blur controls just below to clean up the selection. Now, once your mask is clean and accurately targeting just the skin, you're ready to start making subtle color corrections. Under the correction section, you'll find the basic color controls like temperature, tint, and midtones. Now, quick tip, if you ever drag a slider too far, just double click it to reset it to its default value. Now, before we jump into correcting the skin tone selection, it's important to take a look at the vector scope. This is a key tool for checking the accuracy of skin tones. So let's now head over to the Lumetri scopes panel, right click and make sure that vector scope YUV is enabled. The vector scope is a color analysis tool that shows you where the colors in your image sit on a color wheel. It's especially useful for checking if your skin tones look natural. Now inside the vector scope, you'll notice a diagonal line called the skin tones line. If your skin tones fall too far to the left or right of it, it can start looking unnatural. Back in the HSL secondary section, you can make slight adjustments to the temp and tint sliders. These small tweaks help push the skin tone closer to the skin tones line on the vector scope. The key here is subtlety. You're not trying to create a stylized look. You're just aiming for a natural, healthy looking skin that blends well with the rest of your grade. Okay, so here's a quick before and after so you can see the difference. Now that the skin tones are clean now, let's build a solid cinematic base for our grade. This is especially useful for close-up beauty shots like this one. Start by dragging a new adjustment layer right above the one we just used. This keeps our correction and creative look separate which is super helpful for staying organized and for making quick tweaks later. Change the label color of the new layer to something like yellow so it's easier to spot in your timeline. With the new adjustment layer selected, head over to the Lumetri color panel and drop the saturation to around 82. This helps reduce the digital harshness while still keeping the image vibrant. Next, increase the contrast to make the image feel richer and more dynamic. Here's a quick before and after so that you can see the shift. Now let's tweak the whites, shadows, highlights, and blacks. This style of grading is often seen in Zack Snyder films where the visuals have that bold cinematic richness. But these adjustments alone won't give you that dreamy or soft look just yet, but they just lay the foundation. Now select your footage in both adjustment layers, then nest them. This wraps everything in a single clip, making it easier to apply our glow effect as one layer. Next, 
duplicate the nested clip by holding Alt or Option on a Mac and dragging it into a new track above. This duplicate will be our glow layer. With the top nested layer selected, go to the Effects and Presets panel and search for two effects, Gaussian Blur and Luma Key. Drag both onto the dedicated clip. And here's how we're gonna dial it in. Set the blending mode on the top layer to screen, set the Gaussian Blur to 60, then in the Luma Key effect, play around with the threshold slider. Lowering the threshold helps isolate just the bright areas so only the highlights bloom and the rest of the image stays sharp. Now adjust the duplicate layer's opacity to further reduce the intensity of the effect. This combination creates that subtle halo around bright spots like skin highlights, reflection, or backlighting, all without losing detail or making the shot feel hazy. And just like that, you've added a soft, dreamy glow on top of a clean cinematic grade, all natively inside Premiere Pro. Now, if you want even more control over your dreamy glow, there's an alternative method that uses a free essential graphics template that we've linked in the description. Here's how to use it. Right click your nested clip in the timeline and choose reveal in project to locate it in your project panel. Then drag the downloaded Mogart file into the panel or directly into your timeline. Now select the Mogart file in your timeline. In the essential graphics properties panel, you'll see a media placeholder. This is where you're gonna insert your footage. Now drag the nested clip from your project panel into the media placeholder slot. This method gives you a more natural and customizable glow, especially designed for beauty or narrative shots. You can really dial in the look that you want without stacking multiple effects manually. So whether you go the native effect route or this Mogart based method, both will help you add that soft glowing finish right inside Premiere Pro. So that's how you take flat, unbalanced footage and turn it into something cinematic with clean skin tones, rich contrast, and a soft and dreamy glow all inside Premiere Pro. Catch you on the next one.